Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first edition Tuesday webinar by Franchise Talk to bring and support the most information to the Middle East franchise community. The TGFM, the franchise, the global franchise market exhibitions in cooperation with the Franchise Talk, we are decide to come up with different series of webinar to exchange and explain and exchange the information about the franchise committee. This month, we decide to, to, pre to present the business resuming of and moving forward. Kindly welcome with me, Mr. Ahmad Sharafuddin, Chairman and CEO of Francop Middle East, well known and the godfather of franchise in Middle East with a full background in the, in the Franchise consultants and backgrounds in franchising. Mr. Ahmad, uh, the floor for you to present your slide of today. And then, after within 15 minutes of your presentation, we will present and will be welcoming with us Mr. Brett, the Director of International Development of Little Caesar in USA. Uh, and then we will have Mr. Manish. Wakil, the founder and CEO of Temple USA. Mr. Imad, welcome and, and please share with us your best practice for business resuming and, and moving forward. Mr. Imad. Yes, hi, hi, uh, Jasim. Thank you very much, Jasim. Uh, I would like uh, first to thank you all for giving us this opportunity. I'm really honored to be with you guys. I'm even uh, more honored to be part uh, of this webinar, specifically being part with uh, amazing uh, speakers such as Mr. Brett and Mr. Manesh. It's a pleasure for me to be part of it. Uh, well, let me start by giving a brief first um, about Francorp. Maybe it's uh, just as a refreshment, refreshing kind of uh, topic uh, to talk about franchising as well in general. Uh, as a company, Francorp, we started in 1976 all the way in the United States in Chicago as a main head office. And then we start spreading the franchise culture across the whole region. We started in the GCC and the Middle East uh, 16 years back in which we have managed to work with uh, different uh, organizations. So we managed to franchise uh, different businesses all the way from clinics to funerals and anything in between. We've done oil and gas, retail, you name it. Now, having said that, uh, we have realized uh, basically that the last couple of years, specifically when we talk about franchising, and I guess Mr. Brad and Ms. Manesh will, will be able to, to support this, uh, this topic, is the fact of the growth in terms of franchise. It was tremendously, I mean, we had the tremendous growth in the last couple of years, uh, specifically in our region, in the GCC and the Middle East. And the reason why I'm saying this, because basically uh, people realize that the best approach for them to expand their business is through franchising. And not to mention as well the support of our government. I mean, in the GCC, we have a tremendous support from our government all the way for the SMEs, uh, supporting the local entrepreneurs. So this as well pushed a lot uh, uh, Frank Corp uh, uh, businesses in this region. Now, uh, what happened during COVID and uh, during this pandemic, uh, and it's an unfortunate for all businesses, that we passed through three different phases. Uh, uh, the phases, we called them before, during, and after. Uh, before these, uh, the, 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 pand uh, the pandemic started, we were, like I mentioned, we were seeing tremendous growth in terms of franchising. And then uh, businesses start to expand. We did see a lot of support from the government, a lot of funding, a lot of uh, venture capitalists, uh, M&As, uh, uh, investing a lot in this region and then we passed during the uh, pandemic now the idea when we say about the uh, during the uh, pandemic is the fact that we did not even know what is our future I mean nobody knew what we need to, to do where we stand what we need to how we need to tackle our businesses 
people pass through a lot of difficulties uh, all the way from supporting their business from the manpower uh, side of it to the cost to the expenses to the rental you name it uh, and on top of this we didn't know exactly what's happening so during the pandemic we were under a shock it's like you know we don't know what what, what we're going to do tomorrow so nobody knew the you know the nobody did see as well the the light in the end of the tunnel so we were stuck now what i realized is the fact that a lot of businesses and if many can go uh, during the pandemic we realized as well uh, during the covid mary uh, we realized that a lot of businesses and specifically when we talk about the normal traditional businesses suffered a lot and uh, they didn't know what to do i mean they they don't know how they can manage to even cover their own expenses but at the same time we realized that this is a wake up call and i tell you what i mean by that specifically during the pandemic a wake up call for the online businesses we started to realize that now is the time to really think ahead to think about the future and how we are able as businesses to rectify and duplicate and you know Im implement certain systems that will allow even our businesses being in retail or being in fb to be online i mean the likes of amazons the like of uh, 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 shopify the like of all these big brands that suddenly if you see their growth factor during the pandemic you you see uh, multiples of three digits uh, in terms of sales you see even more than that so people start to realize okay now during the pandemic we need to look and plan and see how we can rectify our businesses in case of any crisis and and this is something we started to work on uh, as franco in in building certain systems to allow people as well to adjust their businesses and work with a lot of uh, cloud businesses uh, in terms of an fmb or online platform uh, as well to to help people to you know try to uh, at least sustain their business by connecting them uh, uh, with these uh, 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 major uh, operators now uh, uh, post covid now we need to look at the long term and we need to really look at the changes so the changes in fmb in retail in services industries in general how we need to do it what is going to be the transformation how we're going to transform our businesses from a day to day normal traditional business into somehow a more kind of a stable business that it is able to uh, recover faster have an online platform or have uh, 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 so, uh, certain other supports that will at least enable these businesses in terms of a crisis be able to uh, to to expand and to grow uh, so um, this is one aspect the other aspect of the post covid we realize as well that since now we're looking at the future we need to really look at how we can help clients as franco to build a better strategy for their business looking at their own existing business models and see how we can rectify these businesses uh, to make it more kind of sustainable and more kind of uh, uh, based on a certain kind of uh, uh, international and 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 best practices in terms of an online or whatever related to uh, 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 their businesses so uh, this is an 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 a brief uh, mr jasim uh, moving forward um uh why we see the gcc and in general our region the middle east is going to recover sooner than uh, than other markets uh simple fact uh, we 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 look at it and we did see it actually is the support of the government to look at it first of all we have a lot of great leaders in this market that they are supporting their day to day operation whether it is funding these businesses at least uh, uh, to recover their losses uh, so government support are supporting a lot a lot of initiative happening to support businesses uh, uh, whether it is on a on a on a manpower basis or whether it is on a funding basis or any type of of the support that the government is doing Th thankfully they're doing that and even more uh, and we have uh, we have a society within our society we have uh, the uh, the uh, government that they have put certain platforms as well an online platform that will help you to recover faster 
So whether it is, like I said, uh, funding financially, whether it is related to manpower or whatever you name it. So uh, uh, thank God we will, be able, we will be able, I guess, and we were actually during this couple of months able to recover faster than others. Now, surely, again, uh, uh, some, several other factors related to that. But uh, as I mentioned, the most important thing is the government support and the funding to these SMEs. And specifically, the major companies that have been affected, and as you may know, uh, Jasim, uh, Brad, and, and, and all the uh, uh, attendees with us, uh, they know that basically uh, small and medium businesses were affected tremendously. And, and these are the businesses that they really need uh, a lot of support, whether it is governmental or whether it is uh, any other type of, uh, of support. So this is a, in a nutshell. Um, now, moving forward, uh, like I mentioned, we need to put a system. So uh, we have put a system that people can consider uh, franchising their business in a more uh, kind of a fastest and easier way to grow their business in the sense that we have implemented uh, certain uh, solutions, whether it is an IT solutions or finance uh, solutions or even an online solutions, uh, let it be from an operational manual perspective, if they want to audit their franchisees or provide their franchisees with the online manuals, we've done all that on an online platform. We, uh, anything pertaining auditing, finance as well, we created a good kind of, uh, we signed several deals and we have uh, good partners with us on board that they are supporting us with all the uh, online IT systems. Uh, so um, we are able to support as well in return our clients. So this is in a, in a nutshell, uh, Mr. Jassim. Thank you this very much, a... Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Ahmad. And I totally uh, agree with you with all that kind of support that uh, it's happening right now, I think in the United Arab Emirates as well in other countries that most of the government, they realize that they need to support uh, uh, small medium enterprise and most of those being affected by COVID-19. And uh, I will come back to you later on, Imad, about the franchise. It might be the best solution to, to, to grow your business uh, post COVID-19. Uh, uh, I think that could be uh, one of the solutions. And we will talk later on about the relationship between franchisor and franchisee uh, in terms of support during COVID-19. Um, uh, now I would like to welcome Mr. Brett uh, Librari, uh, Director International Development of Little Caesars. Uh, Mr. Brett, you welcome uh, and thank you very much for joining us all the way from United States. Uh, it is a morning time and I believe it is an uh, sorry, it's a morning time in you and evening time with us. So I, I don't know to say good morning or to say good evening. Mr. Brett, Mr. Brett, I think you're on mute. Mr. Brett, can you hear me? Yes, now I, we hear you. Okay, very sorry for that. Um, no so, so, Mr. Brett, please the floor floor for you and uh, we look forward. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time today, everybody. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about an incredible brand that's been around for 60 plus years called Little Caesars Pizza. Uh, a little introduction about me. Uh, I've been around the franchise community for about 35 years, uh, focusing on the food business. And uh, I'm the Director of International Development for Little Caesars for the Middle East uh, Asia and Eastern Europe. Uh, Little Caesars is the third largest pizza chain in the world. Uh, we uh, have grown mostly throughout North America and Latin America and in the past few years have focused uh, very uh, heavily on uh, moving into the Middle East, Asia and Eastern Europe. Uh, we are in 26 countries and territories around the world. Um, we uh, are aggressively looking to add flags to this map. And, um, you know, we've, we've found that our development opportunities uh, have been profoundly increased, not only in this crisis, but in the last few years due to consumer demands. Um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the state of the pizza business 
and uh, why this sector of the food franchising world is so important to focus on. It's a $145 billion industry. Uh, there are approximately 5 billion pizzas sold annually across the world. Um, in the Middle East, uh, pizza sales are up 8.7%, but all over the world, pizza sales are up. Um, this is probably not a surprise to a lot of people because everybody likes pizza, uh, but in an environment that is uh, so challenged, um, I find it actually, uh, for somebody even inside the pizza business, amazing how uh, strong um, and credible our business is as we move through this. Um, this is a slide that talks about kind of the pizza business compared to the rest of the food industry. As you can see, our sales have actually, uh, our transactions have actually increased um, compared to uh, our quick service and fast casual brethren in the industry. Um, and what, what's interesting is they've increased a lot. Um, and then, you know, the amount of transactions that have occurred, I mean, our, uh, our uh, uh, contraction uh, post COVID actually was substantially less, um, really almost half of the rest of the food industry. And that goes to the real credibility of um, the delivery uh, pizza business and the value-based orientation of our product. Uh, if you look at you know, all the other food sectors across the industry, they are substantially down, uh, up to 85% down. Pizza is actually up, uh, up to 5%. Um, and, you know, when COVID first happened, our sales did retract for a couple of weeks, but then people woke up and they realized that uh, no product is probably safer and more convenient than a delivery pizza cooked in a 450 degree oven. Our product is based around really, you know, three things, family fun and pizza. And uh, the three pillars of our business are, are founded in value, convenience and quality. And what I want to do for a couple minutes is kind of explain what that really means. Um, you know, uh, about 12 years ago, we developed a concept called Hot and Ready, and it really transformed the pizza industry as we know it. As you know, most people, um, when they order a pizza, are paying substantially more than $5 for a large one-topping pizza. And around the world, our average price is somewhere around $5 US for a one-topping pizza. Um, and in many countries, that's a 12 inch pizza in the U S it's a 14 inch pizza. Um, this is, uh, our, uh, Spain, um, product. It's a five Euro, uh, ham on pork or pepperoni pizza. And then in India, which we just opened last year, there's a 159 rupee classic veggie pizza. And that's a 10 inch pizza. Uh, which has a lot of uh, incredible acceptance in this market. Uh, we've been awarded America's best value uh, for the last 13 years and counting. And that's a big deal when you look at the American fast food industry. It's probably the most competitive fast food industry in the world. And we are the top uh, number one value among all the players. Um, you know, our customers increasingly around the world are demanding that we deliver a product, you know, what they want, when they want, whenever they want it. So uh, it's not just about locations anymore. It's about delivery first, really, and convenience through drive-throughs and, um, you know, contactless pickup. And that's something we're really delivering moving forward. Uh, we have a, a technology called Caesar Vision, which is the technology piece in our store that provides more efficiency, lower labor, increased productivity, but really it, it connects with our Little Caesars app, which is shown here in the middle, which has an incredible graphic interface and has won incredible awards for its usability and consumer acceptance. But basically, you can order a pizza with point and click. And then over to the right, it shows our pizza portal, which is, for lack of a better word, uh, a pizza ATM. You can order your pizza through our pizza app, and, um, you know, in a very short time later, you'll get a, a announcement on your phone saying your pizza's ready with the four digit code. You could walk into your Little Caesar store without standing in the queue, enter the four digit code and your pizza will come out uh, hot and ready. So 
again, a very convenient option for those millennials and people who are interested in, in the safe delivery of their product moving forward. Again, we've won tons of awards for our technology and our usability and you know, our customer interface and our ability to connect with customers using that technology has, has really increased our sales substantially. And then the last thing is quality. Uh, we're the only major pizza chain that makes our dough fresh in our store every single day. Um, that's a big deal because the majority of your pizza is in fact dough and our dough is, is extraordinary quality. We're also one of the only major pizza chain chains that use 100% natural cheese. The majority of our competitors use something called pizza cheese. And pizza cheese has a number of ingredients and fillers that really aren't cheese. And I think it's a big, it's a big differentiator that we use a 100% whole cheese product. And then again, we use vine ripened tomatoes for our sauce. So for the past, uh, you know, decade or more, uh, our sales have gone nowhere but up. And that's a big deal when you look at uh, years like 2008, where the economy, you know, really crashed around the world, our sales were in fact up. And that goes to the value orientation of our product. When the economy is, is, is contracting and business is, is more difficult to, you know, find that income uh, for the families across the world, a value-based product where you can feed a family of, of three for roughly the equivalent of five US dollars is a big deal. And which is why we do really good in recessionary and depression um, economic environments. How we support our franchisees is also a big deal. We, we provide supply chain around the world in every market that we go into. We supply effective marketing, um, you know, in many markets around the world, even where we've never had a presence, people know the idea of Pizza Pizza. It's our iconic marketing campaign that's very effective. We provide training and development, not only for your managers, but your frontline people uh, through in-person training and also technology. Uh, we have operations training, um, which is, you know, more important now than ever to provide safety, not only to our employees, but our customers. And then finally, architectural help to design stores efficiently and effectively so you can have profitable environments to operate your pizza business. Uh, this is a picture of our 70 plus colleagues from 10 plus countries around the world. We have offices all over the world uh, to support you uh, near to all of our stores. Um, our professionals, uh, you know, range in, uh, you know, their their scope of expertise from operations to legal to supply chain. Um, but the, the, the important thing to, to know here is we literally have hundreds and hundreds of, of years of experience to support our franchise community. You know, and lastly, you know, what I wanna point out is that, you know, Little Caesars Pizza uh, is a brand that is ready to grow. It's very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a family company that is uh, very well financed. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be able to support our franchisees through thick and thin in an environment where a lot of our competitors are either going away or you know, reducing their staff. We're actually leaning into this environment because our sales are up and we'd love to find new franchisees uh, to be a part of our team. And with that, I'd like to say thank you and, and I really appreciate you having me here today. Thank you, thank you, Brad. And, and really, it is uh, uh, impressive that you have this kind of information, especially uh, showing the growth of pizza during COVID-19. And uh, we are so glad uh, uh, to, to listen and to watch to your presentation as well, to give us more uh, information about Little Caesars. And we look forward uh, soon later, we see it Little Caesar in the, in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and we will come back later on to discuss about which kind of support, again, you are giving to your franchisees during uh, COVID-19. But uh, now let's welcome Mr. Manish Bakil, the founder and CEO of Temples USA. Again, uh, you're most welcome, Mr. Manish, all the way from United States, from Texas. Uh, it is, uh, again, I will repeat it, it's a good evening here and good morning to you in Texas. Uh, I'm very interested to, 
to, to, uh, to get more information about the temples as a different concept model and the franchise, as everybody knows, uh, and everybody knows that franchise, it's the FMB. But today, I think, Mr. Manish, you are coming up with different business and it is a franchisable. Mr. Manish, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank the EFM and the Franchise Talk for hosting uh, this webinar. Uh, we're excited to be here. Um, yeah, I look forward to having a little conversation about franchising. We definitely believe that, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as Mr. Maud and Mr. Brett uh, have said before me, you know, in the industry, when everything, uh, in the economy, when everything goes up and down, you want to go after it. You want to work with businesses that have the staying power. And the biggest part is instead of creating your own new brand, uh, you go with a brand with a support or you go with a company that has the support to uh, have a proven business model. And as you mentioned, yeah, we are definitely a little bit different uh, than a lot of the businesses that are out there uh, in the industry. So uh, with that, uh, let me actually pull up my presentation here. Uh, so you guys can, uh, we can start with that. Uh, here we go. Hopefully you guys are able to see everything here. And we don't, we don't need to see your bank account. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, uh, hopefully, you know, it, it gets bigger later on. So then I'll show it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, well, so this is a little bit in terms of our, uh, of, of our presentation here. So this is one of our locations uh, uh, that we have presented here. Um, I think it's, so a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a black screen, Mr. Uh, sorry again, I'm sorry? It, it is a black screen. Oh, that is odd. Uh, yeah. Let me try that again. Please. You shared it in the first was good. Then it came up to the black screen. Maybe the slide was different. Well, let's try it. Uh, let me try it now. There we go. Does that work? Yes, please. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Apologies on that. Um, so I'll speak a little bit about Tumbles um, and, and what we are as a business model. And then I'll go into exactly what we had to do a little bit differently. And if we were ready, obviously, uh, excuse me, regarding COVID and how we work within the recession environment as well. And, uh, and how we support our franchisees uh, going forward and currently. Uh, so looking at this, I mean, our main goal is shaping the minds and bodies of the future. So our program is uh, based on the idea that uh, it's education and fitness programs based on developmental milestones. Uh, so the idea is, is for ages four months to 12 years old, uh, the main goal is to combat childhood obesity. Uh, so, you know, when you look at any programs that are out there, you know, we look at it as a business model is it has to be a need at the end of the day uh, that comes in. And unfortunately, the way the world is headed right now, uh, and, and, you know, I think right now probably makes the most sense. We're all sitting in front of our computers and on a Zoom call, I don't think anyone's being active, uh, as we say, it's, kids is extremely important. Uh, childhood obesity is the lead major cause uh, that goes into many other ailments afterwards. Uh, for the children and for adults into juvenile diabetes and other ailments. Uh, we want to make sure they're active. And how do we do that in a fun environment? And that's what Tumbles is. Uh, it's the idea of providing a good business that provides a need and it solves a problem. Uh, that is the key. Uh, the biggest part is, you know, when you're looking at revenues for businesses and no one, what anyone says, we have to have a business that makes money. If not, no one's going to get involved in it, you know? Uh, so the idea is, you have a gym program. We added a STEAM program for the education side. So we have a combination of both. So you're doing subscription classes, birthday parties, camps, and different events. So it's fun for the whole family. And that's the idea behind it, education and fitness. Um, so this is one of the different things that we work with where we have instructors in our facility where you see the child walking up. You're working on different areas here for the child uh, and in, the, in the leg strength and core strength. So this is how we operate in our facilities. Um, so our, I won't talk too much about these areas because I know we want to get into the area of what we've done differently and what tumbles in the future. So obviously you can find all of this information regarding our gym program and uh, our STEAM program on our website, tumbles.net. Um, so we won't go too much into these areas. Uh, but the biggest part is you want to have a differentiating uh, when it comes to a business in terms of taking advantage of what you have available at your fingertips right now and how the world is changing. And obviously post-COVID, pre-COVID, 
you're looking at different areas and you're saying, how do we present a program? How do you present a business, a program or a product in a way that is going to be accepted? And at the same time, it's going to entice the younger generation, right? Because, you know, when we grew when I grew up, obviously, you know, we're looking at VHS cassette tapes. Nowadays, I ask my kids what a CD is and they don't even know what that is. You know, they're saying, can I get it on Google or on YouTube? Uh, so the idea is coming up with a concept that is going to, uh, you know, uh, well, to encourage the younger generation to get involved more and more. So we came up with bodily kinesthetic learning. So the idea is steam in the gym. And this, the reason I want to mention this specifically is our program is obviously international. Uh, it meets all the international standards and all that. But, you know, you're looking at a program that's delivered with a combination of saying you're going to experience the part of steam in the gym program. So the kids are physically actually working and doing things hands on. And I think that's a key differentiator, right? You want to nowadays, you have to be able to adapt if anything COVID has taught us, but we have to be able to adapt. I don't know if the rest of the world was, was going to get on Zoom and do everything virtually, but we were kind of forced to do so. Uh, same concept here with the kids. You want to have them be encouraged in order to do the work. So that's what we created with our program for the STEAM and gym. Um, going into the next area, this is our facilities uh, to give you a little bit of an idea of what they look like. All of this equipment and everything that you see is custom designed and we bring it into all the locations. Um, uh, so worldwide, we can deliver all of the areas. So our facilities are 270 to 300 square meters. Um, you know, we have the master and single franchises available. So this area that you see, uh, our gyms are around, uh, you know, 300 square meters. So we can design them and architecturally, we do all of the work and we design everything uh, from scratch, from all the locations. So it's turnkey uh, that we provide. Our competitive landscape, I think we talked about this beforehand. A lot of the locations have just gym. We have steam as well. So the combination provides for ages four months to 12 years old. Uh, both the areas. Uh, investments, I won't get into too much in this area. We can certainly talk about this uh, uh, on a separate basis. If anyone is interested, obviously, you can reach out to us. Uh, this is the main area I wanted to speak about. Uh, I apologize for going very fast on the other areas. I wanted to give just a little bit of a background. Uh, but, you know, and in this environment that we're in, I think every business, uh, you know, investor, franchisee, always ask, what is the franchisor going to do to support us when things are not going so well? When things are going well, everyone is happy. Obviously, no one is asking any questions. So in this scenario right now, uh, I think we kind of tend to uh, shine a little bit, uh, uh, mainly for the reason that we were already a virtual company. All of our, all of our systems are virtual based. Uh, so if you look at our websites, everything is completely modern, it's optimized, everything else. Um, a lot of businesses were going into saying, how do we provide online education, online training? Uh, you know, uh, what kind of systems do you have in place? So these are the questions we had to answer. And, you know, for us, we were a little bit ahead. Um, we already have an online curriculum and training platform that's proprietary. We built that for all of our franchisees. So our franchisees were saying, well, we want to teach. Uh, we can't have any of our staff come to our location, obviously, because we're closed but we're providing virtual classes. How do I train everyone to do this? We already have over 600 videos that we put together online that provide all the curriculum in a step-by-step -step basis um, that you can train everyone. And at the same time, you're able to deliver this curriculum to your customers, which is the key aspect. So, you know, being able to pivot uh, in a time of such as this is very key for all the franchisees so all of our locations in the United States, they are closed uh, due to the fact that we're not allowed to be open. And, um, you know, inshallah, hopefully we'll be able to be get past this soon enough uh, that we don't have to be, uh, you know, stuck at home. But as a business owner, you worry about paying your expenses, paying your staff. You want to be able to do that by having the support of the franchisor. So we also created a peer-to-peer -peer communication system that we have here, which is, uh, you know, you are able to communicate with all the franchisees uh, and the corporate team by asking a question. And it's like WhatsApp that we're using. And, but it's specifically made just for Tumbles franchisees. So you're able to share different ideas. Uh, you know, what videos are you sharing? What marketing are you doing? 
our team has been able to stay in close contact and this is a system that we use. It wasn't built before, but we didn't realize how invaluable it was going to be during this time. So, you know, the other questions that you want to come up is how do we prepare for the future? You know, for us in, in franchising, we, you know, as a Tumbles franchisee, we always look at it as saying it takes six to nine months, possibly nine to 12 months to open a business. So looking at the current situation, we tell the franchisees, you plan for the six months ahead by the systems that we have in place for you. And you, you take this time to solidify your foundation. And we did that with actually launching a brand new website and we built some of the cloud-based systems and we added more videos and things that we did in order to work with the franchisees to prepare so we come out stronger when all of this tends to slow down. Um, but currently we wanted to make sure that the franchisees themselves are still able to reach out to the kids because more than anything, you know, uh, for food businesses, you know, it's, you can order everything in, uh, for different areas, for online, for shopping, for clothing, you're able to order it comes to your house. But how do you engage with parents and kids? You have to be face to face, you know, and that's where our platforms come in very handy because we're still able to have a conversation with them, uh, and talk to the kids. Some of the things that we ended up doing, which were a little bit different is we ended up launching virtual classes for free for our kids, for, for, for our students uh, and our clients. And when we did that, it's the relationship aspect that comes into play when you're dealing with kids and families. And we're a relationship business, I think with a lot of businesses uh, that are, but more so even for us, because we have to build a relationship with the kids themselves. And kids are, they remember everything. Uh, they remember everything even six months from now. So, so, we, so our instructors have to be face to face uh, with them. And this really helped uh, in terms of providing the support uh, that the franchisees needed um, in, in terms of moving forward. Now, it, you know, the question that a lot of franchisees always ask us, you know, going forward is, you know, are we prepared if something like this happens again? Uh, are we prepared in terms of saying, do we have different revenue streams that we can tap into in order to make sure our business survives such as COVID or anything else or a recession, anything that comes in. Obviously this is unprecedented, uh, but the way we look at it is, uh, you know, we don't know the answers to those questions, uh, but we say that we always will be there and we're available and we have to work together in order to survive and in order to thrive. Uh, so that as long as the lines of communication are there, uh, so this peer-to-peer -peer communication platform is available not only to the U.S. market, but what we did is we made it international. Um, so when we're actually going into our existing locations that we have here, we'll be opening in Qatar in a little bit uh, in, uh, in February. We're still on target for that, uh, for February of 2021. Uh, they are all able to communicate together. Um, and the next thing that we did is, uh, which is actually not here, is last week we just built our first beta test where we built our entire website in Arabic. Uh, you know, for local to, for everyone locally to communicate and we are building a team actually based in the in dubai that is going to be supporting everyone for training and classes that will be based from dubai as well so you have someone that's there locally within your time zone so you don't have to worry about saying well in the united states right now it's morning but it's evening in dubai so you're not going to be running classes at six o'clock in the evening when it's 10 o'clock here so uh, we'll have someone in the same time zone as well so the idea of having someone that's always available and willing to work with you in order to take be, be there side by side, I think that makes a huge difference in the type of uh, business that you want to go into and the type of company that you want to work with. Um, this is our leadership team. Uh, you'll see a lot of the team is based in, uh, so obviously I'm based here in the States. We have some people in the States here. We have a big team. This team, entire digital and training team is actually based in Middle East and Serbia. Uh, so uh, we do that uh, in, once again, and it'll be Dubai based in now here as well. Um, so the combination is once again, uh, we long as we work together and we plan for the future because everything takes time, then you will be able to survive uh, anything that's thrown at you or the world that the world throws at you. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, any questions or anything else, uh, please, uh, we're here. And uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for allowing us to be part of this uh, conversation. Uh, Mr. Yasim, I think you're muted, yeah?
Miss Mary, can you hear me? Yes, uh, Mr. Jesse, uh, okay. Mr. Uh, Manish, we can hear you. Thank you for that uh, presentation. Uh, we'll just uh, wait um, uh, for Mr. Justin to come by and uh, because he's having some technical uh, problem right now. Uh, let's. I will just share the screen now and then let's just uh, check for the upcoming uh, question. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Mr. Justin is back here. Hello? Yes. Mary, everyone? Mr. Manish? Yes, yes, yes. We, we hear you now. Yeah, you I hear just you now. The presentation. Thank you very much for allowing us to be part of this. Okay, Mr. Manish, thank you very much. I had some problem. My, my laptop went out of the battery, honestly. Uh, that's why. Uh, but I hope everybody hearing me well now. Yeah, we hear, I hear you fine. Yeah, we do hear you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Manish, uh, and, and really it is uh, very interesting to know about uh, your, your education center, and that is the, uh, giving an example that to any type of business could be a franchisable, and we really look forward that to have temples very soon in the United Arab Emirates and all the way uh, to, to the Gulf countries. Now, I do have some questions I would like to raise it up here. Uh, and there was uh, Mr. Imad, if you are hearing me, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, do you think the franchise business model is the right business model for investing, and why? Yeah, hi, Jasim. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, like you just mentioned, any business is a franchisable business, Jasim. Uh, no matter what the business is, is all about, it could be a franchisable business. Uh, as I mentioned as well in our presentation briefly, uh, as Frank, we have managed to tap into different uh, segments uh, of businesses, all the way from uh, uh, retail to services, uh, to uh, education, to you name it, oil and gas, gas stations. So from our angle, we believe uh, if you want to uh, move fast, if you want to fast track your business, the only approach for you is to, you know, go into franchisable uh, business. And, and this will solve uh, uh, four major problems that any, other, any investor looks at, whether it is uh, money or time or people or even competition. So for us, those four key factors, you can always uh, 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 solve and, and be able to solve it when you look at the franchise, uh, uh, franchising process. So, yes, uh, 100%, uh, Jasim. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Brett, uh, uh, going through your presentations and uh, uh, with your business concept of pizza, I think, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure, but I would like to hear it from you. Do you think, uh, or do you agree that the pizza business model is affordable franchise? that everyone can have it? Is it affordable franchise business? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Um, you know, before, before COVID, we were very location centric. We were very focused on having the best locations and uh, some of these locations, quite honestly, um, have become very expensive over the last decade. And what's really happened, what really happened before COVID is consumers were looking more for a delivery first environment for a convenience based environment that was not based around a location that in fact was becoming very expensive. So after COVID, you know, this has become actually our first consideration, you know, how can we uh, deliver effectively uh, to our customer base, not so much having uh, the best, um, you know, location, uh, that that would would have more expenses uh, levied on the franchisee. So in the future, it's actually pizza has become more affordable because we're looking for locations that are small, efficient, not dine in, mostly take out and delivery, and really focused on um, a delivery first, uh, either drive through or take out environment. So it's become more affordable, not only for the franchisee, but for the consumer um, the consumer is really looking to, to feed their family, to have meal solutions that are fast, efficient, and affordable. 
And, you know, in, in our environment, you know, for a 12 inch pizza, that's roughly the equivalent of $5, that'll feed two or three people. So that's an extreme value, not only for uh, the consumer, but the, the very sustainable business for the franchisee. Good. Uh, there was a question, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Bird, it came from Mr. Salem, and uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will ask you, uh, he mentioned here, Pizza Hut just announced they are closing 950 locations. So what are you guys doing differently to sustain the little Caesar? Are you planning to go into organic pizza, for example? Well, that's a good question. And, you know, I, you know Pizza Hut has, has a, a business model that was more focused around dine-in around the world, which is why, in fact, they're closing... Um, a, a good portion of their locations because uh, these dining locations were large, um, you know, increasingly unused because people were looking again for this delivery first environment. So their business, the business format of the pizza business has changed and Pizza Hut's uh, dine-in uh, business uh, was just kind of an antiquated modality. So uh, you know, our business actually is increasing and growing uh, with our core product. So we're doubling down on technology and convenience. Um, and we do have product innovation, but our product innovation is, um, you know, mo more around uh, taste and uh, quality. So, uh, for instance, we have a, a, a thick crust pizza, deep dish pizza, uh, that is quite popular in some parts of the world. In other parts of the world, we have a thin crust pizza that we offer. We also offer something called a quattro pizza, which is basically four types of pizza on one pie. So we're using um, our opportunity to differentiate ourselves more along the lines of technology, convenience, and um, differentiated product uh, that has different uh, taste profiles in mind. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manish, uh, there was a question. Uh, it is about, as you know, here in the USA and even here in the United Arab Emirates, they are talking about opening a school uh, of COVID. So what are the strategy of protecting the kids that are be attending in your facilities if you're open? So is there kind of any procedure being taken in place? Uh, yes, yes, actually. So we have actually a couple of locations that have been open. So what we did is um, uh, we work with the CDC guidelines and the FDA guidelines here, but clean, uh, vigorous cleaning schedules uh, are the biggest thing um, th that we have put in place. But the main thing to know is all of our equipment that we have in inside our facilities is antimicrobial. And it is, you know, we do clean our facilities after every class. Um, but what we did unique uh, for this situation is uh, we, we came up with classes where we, uh, where we have limited class schedule sizes. So instead of taking 12 or 15 kids in a class, we're down to about six kids and our facility is big enough where the kids can uh, distance and we've created as such a, into a obstacle courses to run certain classes as well as private play groups. So we had to modify our offerings in order to meet uh, uh, in order to keep everyone safe. And it's worked well in our, uh, in our Texas as well as our Georgia and our New Jersey locations. Uh, some of the other locations such as New York are still not open uh, because the government has not allowed, but where we are allowed to open, we're extremely cautious because safety is the number one uh, concern for everyone. And we, as we like to say for Tumbles before even COVID was we're the cleanest facility. Uh, so that actually played a massive role in, in, uh, in parents understanding that we were already this, in such a way, but now we take on even a more vigorous role in keeping the facilities even more, uh, more enhanced. Very good. Uh, um, I would like to, to bring uh, um, another topic. I mean, we brought it up during our discussions about the support between franchisee and franchisor during COVID-19. Now, in terms of financial support, um, um, as, you, as all of you guys know, that there is a business relationship between franchisee and franchisor. And during the COVID-19, there's a lot of a business being shut down or lockdowns uh, or the business went down, whatever you want to call it. 
So is there any kind, I don't know, of, uh, of Little Pizza or Tumbles they offer to their franchisee in terms of waiving some of the franchise uh, fees uh, or franchise loyalty fees, for example? Um, great question. Actually, uh, this is a, a personal uh, thing of mine, actually, and, and the way we operate Tumbles. I, I used to be a franchisee. Uh, for a long, long time. And I always realized that, you know, uh, the franchise or franchisee relationship is a, a symbiotic relationship. You know, one cannot live without the other. Um, so for that reason, actually, before when COVID hit here uh, in, uh, and we started in the States in the first week of March, uh, the first thing we did at Tumbles was actually, uh, we called all the franchisees and they weren't closed yet, but we told them because of what's coming up, uh, we paused all the franchise fees, including our systems fees uh, that are just even our hard costs, because uh, at the end of the day, we didn't feel right uh, that our job wasn't to collect the minimum fees or anything, but it was to work with the franchisees as our partners, uh, more so than anything else, to make sure uh, that uh, they, they are going to be able to survive this and thrive after it's done. So we thought, we thought that it was imperative that we uh, stop all the fees to make sure that all the employees are taken care of, the franchisees themselves are taken care of, and that they'll be here uh, for the long run. Very good. Uh, Mr. Britt. Uh... Mr. Britt. Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, I'm, uh, just the same questions in terms of supporting uh, the, your franchisees during the COVID-19 in terms of waiving some of your franchise fees, it was a plan for it or not? Well, it, it, the interesting thing is that the first two weeks after the uh, COVID-19 started, um, I think we we're all in shock and everything shut down and it was difficult. And we did provide some opportunities for our franchisees uh, to mitigate um, you know, some of their costs or, or delay some of their payments. Uh, but what happened after the first two weeks was for our brand, um, nothing but magical. Our sales actually started to increase and grow. Uh, and, and actually our franchisees in many places around the world, uh, not all, but in, in, a, in a good majority of our markets have, um, you know, benefited actually from this kind of lockdown and challenging situation because of the delivery opportunity and the value proposition of our product. So we really haven't had to provide, um, you know, too much financial assistance because our franchisees have actually uh, financially done well um, in this environment, which has been, um, you know, really uh, a nice surprise for our brand. And, um, and very thankful that that it's that it's turned out that way for us. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ahmad. There's a question um, since you are specialized uh, in, the, in, the, in the franchise consultants. There's a question asking about what do you think is the best way to obtain new leads as a franchisor during upcoming six to twelve months? Should we focus on the online marketing or in the possible of participating in exhibitions? Mr. Ahmad. Mr. Ahmad. Okay, let me let me. Uh, I, I I could answer that if 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 you like. Please, um, please, please, please do. What's so, the best way to obtain new leads? Sure. So so you know, unfortunately, you know, I I love going to exhibitions and meeting um, new people and networking for contacts. Unfortunately those exhibitions have been severely limited and, and in fact canceled and delayed um, for many months. So I think it's gonna be very challenging to, 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 um, to work in the exhibition environment. Although when they come back, you know, I'll certainly be the first to, uh, to move in that direction because I value this opportunity. And I think that exhibitions do in fact work well for us. Um, but, you know, the online space right now is, is really the place that we all kind of live. Um, whether that be fortunate or unfortunate, it's just the circumstance we're in. So uh, people are looking for communication right now. They're looking for new opportunities. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people's uh, 
income or job environment has changed because of COVID. So they're looking for, for, for different opportunities to move forward and they're hungry for, for good options. So the online environment right now has uh, been a very successful place for me to meet and, and interact with new candidates. Yeah, true, 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 true. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, uh, I, I, I personally believe uh, um, that the franchise, uh, it is a good business model concept that at this time of the situations that everybody need to look into investing in a franchise, as Mr. Imad mentioned, because it's a, it's a right business model in terms of investment. Uh, and uh, 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 and most of you uh, agreed that the franchise, uh, uh, um, uh, it, is a, it is a relationship between a franchisee and franchisor, and everybody needs to support each one uh, to, to, to sustain that kind of, of, of relation. Um, um, I, I need to end it up here. I have three minutes. Uh, I would like to ask each one of them in terms of uh, uh, like an advice if someone as a franchisee, I mean, today both of you as a franchisor, but if me as a franchisee uh, running your brand and you are the franchisor, what kind of advice that you need to give it to me as, as a franchisee toward you as a franchisor. So Mr. Manish, if the, if the answer is clear, if the question is clear, please could you elaborate more here? Uh, sure, sure. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I would say is uh, open lines of communication are the, are the biggest thing. So what we did with the franchisees is um, our, our franchisees in the States uh, needed assistance on a legal side and a real estate side and what to do. So what we did is uh, right from the beginning, we just, uh, we had calls almost, uh, you know, every other day in the first two weeks in order to have open lines of communication uh, because it's more so emotional at the same time when, you ha when you're presented with this type of situation. Uh, and then we gave them all different avenues and as much information as possible uh, in, in order to see what are the different uh, scenarios that can take place. Um, I think we spoke about that earlier, you know, uh, is, it, is this going to be done in three months, six months, eight months? We don't know yet, but you have to be prepared with different uh, options that are available to you. So as a franchisor, uh, we have to make sure that we're here to help them come up with value options and talk through those options hopefully uh, and and see what is going to be a viable op, uh, in a viable way to move forward hopefully does that answer your question yes mr. Br mr. Brett do you want yes. to well, look I, I I think I think franchising is a, is a, is an environment where we all have a great opportunity to learn from best practices from each other and um, you know take what is a really challenging environment and kind of create, um, you know, lemonade from lemons, if you will. And uh, I can tell you that, that even I being in this business for, you know, you know, more than three decades have learned um, in this, in this time uh, from a, a number of really great people in the franchise business. And, and that shared learning is something that, that, that all of our franchisees can benefit from instead of kind of finding their way around uh, sometimes in the dark um, to avoid making mistakes and, and, and really find uh, ways to enrich not only the lives for them, but for their family and their customers along the way. So, you know, now is a really great time to, to work with people in franchising uh, who have spent, you know, really years and decades uh, growing and uh, prospering in their business and finding ways uh, to solve problems. And I think that's in the end, what business really is uh, solving problems for customers and, 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 and that's what franchising does best. And um, that's my, my, Thank my you. feel for franchising. Thank you. The, the, there was a, a question here, and he mentioned question to all, and th I will end up with this question from Salama. I mean, it's very tricky questions. I don't know what he's hidden behind this, but he said, because of the 
economic situations, uh, do you finance a potential franchisee? I mean, this is a general question, and he mentioned question to all. And he mentioned because of the economic situations, do you, you finance any potential franchisee? So, Mr. Manish, Mr. Robert, be careful in this answering these questions. <laughs> um, I'm sure it looks like Mr. Salami has something in mind, so you might ask <laughs> for finance. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, that's actually a very good question because we have that question come up here in the States already. Uh, we have about five to six locations in the works right now. And uh, we had someone who was interested, you know, who's actually signed on as a franchisee. And what we did is, um, uh, you know, in order for the financing side, because they're working with the Small Business Administration, it's like working with, you know, the government, obviously, in order for financing the business. Um, we said we would also work with them uh, in, order to, uh, in, in order to come up with a viable plan. So it comes on a, on a one on a case by case basis, because if you're doing a country exclusive, it's a very different option than doing one location. Uh, but yeah, definitely to say that we are open to discussing it is the best way to move forward. It's not a blanket yes or no answer. Uh, because, you know, if you come out and say we want to open 10 locations in UAE, uh, suddenly to finance all of that might be a little bit difficult, obviously. Uh, but to order to start off in order to have the right investment partner is more important uh, than moving forward anywhere else. Uh, and, and, and I think that's more important. Thank you very much. Uh, at the end, uh, we'd like to thank you very much, everybody, all the participants on this Tuesday webinar. And thank you very much for the team behind this webinar from the franchise talk uh, to uh, the TGFM, the, the Global Franchise Market Exhibition and Index Holding, the, organizing this uh, webinar. And uh, Tuesday webinar, it is every month in second week of, of the month of Tuesday. Uh, it was really a pleasure uh, speaking to you, Mr. Brett, Mr. Manish, and we look forward to see you in upcoming exhibitions in Dubai in March 2021. Look forward to see you in the global franchise market, which is the, the one of the main exhibition held in the United Arab Emirates in Dubai. Uh, thank you very much, everybody who was attending this webinar. I hope it was uh, uh, useful and successful with very transparent information was being exchanged between all of us. Thank you very much, everybody, and look forward for the next Tuesday webinar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.